Life gives us what we need in order to grow. When we frame our lives in that way, challenges become an opportunity. Yesterday, I had to deal with about two hours on the phone with USPS, United States Postal Service, regarding a package of mine that they lost. And the hoops I had to jump through to get to even talk to somebody that knew what they were doing is absolutely amazing. And it really tested my patience. I would call and the person would say, we can't help you, you gotta go to another department. I'd call that department, wait on hold, and then they would say, sorry, I had even one guy, he didn't even say sorry. He just didn't even say anything. And he transferred me back to the original department that I spoke to. And I'm just trying to get the insurance reimbursement on a package that they lost. And there's no dispute in that. And it is incredible how frustrating it is. Then they would send me to a different department and give me a different phone number. And I couldn't even speak to a real person. It had me jump through so many hoops to even try to get to speak to a real person. And it would say, sorry, uh, I, would, I would enter my tracking number and sorry, that is not recognized. Or I'd enter my tracking number on my phone and it would read it back to me and it was completely wrong even though I entered it correctly. And then I would get disconnected. It was unbelievable. The point being is how I interpret that situation is going to create either suffering, growth, uh, misery, anger, frustration. It's all in how we interpret those challenging situations. And this comes up Uh, in my life coaching sessions with my clients is that there's always something in our world, our environment, within our family, with our friends, with politics. There's always something to be aggravated, frustrated, unhappy, miserable about. And what we do is we point the finger. So yesterday I was pointing the finger at the United United States Postal Service because the customer service experience was really, really poor. And I, after I got off the first call, because I had to split the calls up because I had to work, and the first in the morning, when I called them first thing in the morning, I was, yeah, I was not a happy person. I was not a happy camper because this is just yesterday. I have spent hours with them when they initially lost my package trying to track it down and that was uh, a fight in futility it was extremely frustration there are some really good people that work there that try to help you out Um, there are some people that just don't really care and will try to brush you off but the thing that it taught me is i'm responsible for my experience and my response and the thing i learned is that This exposed within me that I need to adjust my expectations because when we're talking about these huge governmental uh, organizations or, or really companies or services or these big corporate monopolies or even just big business, we are just another number. We're just another dollar sign. They can live without our business. They are so dominant in their marketplace that they really don't have to bend over backwards to keep us happy. And that doesn't mean we should roll over and not be assertive and speak our mind and expect better service and escalate things, you know, if you need to speak to a manager or supervisor to try to get your problem resolved. But it does mean going into these situations, going into life that really they don't care about us. And they don't care if we 
don't use the services again. Now, son, there are always exceptions and they don't care about anyone that is going to be assertive and push back. If my if you watch my earlier video about my dentist who demands and forces me to get yearly x-rays, even though uh, it was under a false pretense. He says, it's I have to do this. This is required of me. It's not required of him. It's something that is generates profit. I'm sure there's a benefit to it that they want to see, you know, the status of your teeth. And if you want to do that, by all means, go ahead. I just didn't want to expose myself to that every year of my getting x-rays right where my brain is. So I pushed back and they did not like that. They were not happy with that. And we're living in a culture and a society where we're really kind of anonymous, that we're not living in a tribe, we're not living in a small community, we're not living where we like most places where we really know our neighbors and they care for us and they look out for us, especially when you're talking about big cities. Smaller towns are different, but we have to adjust our expectations to meet reality. When you bring your car into the mechanic or when you're trying to get your computer repaired or you're trying to deal with something that you bought that's not working, generally, there are really are, again, there are some companies that, that go the extra mile and really do care, but yeah, it's, we're, not, we're not really that relevant to them. And even you know when we talk about government, we're not really that relevant <laughs> to, to uh, big government. And it's kind of sad, but in a way, if you get this, it really empowers you because it allows you to, or allows me to keep my expectations in check. And because it's so easy to feel outraged and angered and upset and disappointed. How could they do this? How could they, how could I wait for two hours trying to get a simple solution or problem resolved? And now I know that that in a lot of cases, that's the status quo. And then when I adjust my expectations accordingly, I'm able to better flow with the situation. And as I said in my previous videos, you have a couple of options. Either you can accept it. Okay, I'm gonna accept this is gonna be a pain in the butt and I'm gonna spend a lot of time trying to get deal with the United States Postal Service and uh, dealing with my package. Oh, and by the way, they lost my package and I finally talked to someone who was able to answer my questions and I filed an insurance claim. It takes 60 days. They lost my package and it takes 60 days for them to decide. And I took insurance out for them to decide whether they're going to refund my money. I'm like, you lost my package and it created an immense amount of inconvenience losing my package. Having said all that, this is the society and the cultural uh, norms that we live in today. We're just, uh, we're just a, a, a number. And that's why the, really the only people that really truly care about us are our mates, spouses, um, boyfriend, girlfriend. Sometimes that might be even a little, a little bit questionable. Uh, family, friends. Uh, that's why it's so important to really build a community, build a tribe of people that you bond and connect with and that have got your back and that will be there for you and that care about you. And it's so easy now with the internet to substitute real connections with superficial Facebook connections, online connections, and thinking I have a lot of online friends or I do a lot of my connecting with my friends online and it's not the same. We really need to go back to old school where life was slower, life was simpler, life was easier. We weren't constantly overwhelmed with so many things to do and we had time to sit out on the, on the front porch and drink lemonade and, and talk to people and just communicate or throw the football around and or throw the baseball around or go to the parks and have picnics. 
a lot of that has been lost and a lot of communities been lost. And so there's kind of like two lessons in that I've learned in this uh, experience and that I'm continuing to learn is adjust my expectations, take responsibility and ownership for when I'm getting frustrated with something or someone and look at what am I in control of and what I'm so what I can change and take action on and what is outside of my control and that I just need to accept. And when you do that, you have such peace and equanimity. Stuff, it, the life is chaotic, the world is chaotic. Stuff is always gonna throw you curveballs. Things are always gonna go wrong. There's always gonna be challenges. And people don't behave, especially when you're talking about in cities, in a way where they're really mindful or, or care about how their actions impact other people. And a, a great example is, is you know, people that don't pick up their, their dog's poop. It's just one of my pet peeves. It kind of drives me crazy. But it's my problem because people are people. They do what they do. And it almost makes us feel better than like, oh, I always pick up my dog's poop or I always do this correctly. I can't understand why other people wouldn't do that. And we've to be at peace, we've got to stop putting our value system, our expectations upon other people. If you don't do that, you're going to suffer and life is going to be much harder. And really looking at everything as an opportunity for growth. Every time I get agitated or upset, I look at it and go, what is this teaching me? How is this exposing my weaknesses? And it's very empowering that way. And it creates a lot less frustration, uh, anxiety, stress. And every day you kind of wake up and go, oh, I'm looking forward to what new things I'm going to learn about myself of my areas of weakness. And it's that growth mindset that really makes life much more fulfilling and rewarding. Love to hear uh, your comments about how any challenges that you have had that you've been able to overcome and grow. If you'd like very affordable, ridiculously affordable life coaching, uh, my email is in the description. Just sh shoot me an email. And anything you can do uh, to help support the channel is greatly appreciated. Uh, if you like subscribe, the usual stuff, um, or if you want to support the channel uh, through a, a donation, that is also greatly appreciated. And um, that's all I got for today. And thanks for tuning in. Until next time. Bye-bye.